Hi guys, Drea from Aloha Plant Life here and welcome back to my channel. And if you guys have been following me on Instagram at Aloha Plant Life, you would know that quite a while ago now I acquired, finally, an Ikea Millspo cabinet. I've been wanting one of these for a long time. They were out of stock for the longest time because of the supply chain issues. And I have just been dying to have one to turn into a greenhouse cabinet. And now I do have one, unfortunately. I didn't have help for a long time to be able to put it together because it does require two people to assemble, but it has now been assembled. I then was being highly indecisive about picking grow lights to put in it, but I have now ordered and received the grow lights. And so today I'm gonna be taking you through my build out and my stocking of plants into this Ikea greenhouse cabinet. So let's start with the grow lights because as I mentioned, I was having a really hard time deciding what grow lights I was going to put into this cabinet. I haven't used any kind of strip grow lights on anything in my house before. So I watched some videos from other YouTubers, read some reviews, and I ended up ordering these lights that I ordered and I will link them down below in the description for you. And I'm not sure if I'm going to be entirely happy with these lights or not. So even though I'm linking it in the description, I'm not recommending them yet because I haven't actually used them on plants yet. So I will give you guys updates further down the line on how things are going in the cabinet and do I still like these lights or not. But part of the reason that I picked these lights, and let me go ahead and grab the box of them so I could show you. So these are strip grow lights and they can be daisy chained together, which just means you can connect multiple of them together so that it can run through one kind of connection throughout the cabinet. And these did come with extra long extension cords for between each strip light. And so I wanted that so that I could make sure there was enough line to get from shelf to shelf. So in this box, we do have all of the connectors for the lights. I'm just gonna be throwing things on the floor. I really wish I had somebody to help me here, but I don't. It does come with some double-sided tape, but I'm here to tell you right now, I know for a fact that the humidity level in this cabinet is not gonna make adhesives adhere well at all. And I have heard stories from other people who have greenhouse cabinets and have used double-sided tape to adhere their lights to the shelves that the humidity like separates it and it falls down onto their plants. So we're gonna be doing something a little bit different today and I will show that to you in a second. And then we have the power cord and this is actually what drew me to wanting to get this particular grow light, even though there are some other cons I feel like to this and I'll get to those in a second. But this is the end that needs to run from inside the cabinet to outside. So as you can see, this is relatively small. It's only about a half inch in diameter. And so I really didn't wanna to have to drill a giant hole like you see a lot of other people do into the bottom or the top of the cabinet because they're trying to get a bigger plug through that hole. These cabinets actually do come with two small holes already in the top of it, but they're designed to be used with showcase lights that Ikea makes specifically for this cabinet. But because this is so small, I was able to just drill one of those pre-existing holes to be a little bit wider so that this can fit through it. And that's one of the things that really, like I said, attracted me to this specific light. Now regarding some of the cons, let me grab one of the actual light strips to show it to you. So this is one of the light strips. And one of my first complaints about this is that it's not quite as long as I would like it to be. Ideally, I would like a 24 inch light for these shelves because that will go almost the full length of the shelf. But once again, all of the ones that were 24 inches had other things that weren't gonna work for me about them. One of the ones that you guys might see recommended a lot by other YouTubers and just other plant people online are, I think they're made by Barina and it's like the T5 lights, I think. It's another bar light like this and it is 24 inches. But when I was reading reviews and watching videos about people who had used those, they were all saying that they get really, really hot and in some cases they were actually burning their plants. So that's why I chose not to go with those Barina ones. If you've had a different experience with them, please comment below and let us know. But these ones specifically state that they don't get hot, that they're more energy efficient. And so I was like, that sounds good to me. But one of the other things that kind of bothers me about this one is that it's also relatively relatively narrow. And so when I was testing these, when I first got them with a light meter to see how much light they were putting out, it really wasn't quite as much as I thought it was going to be. And so originally my plan had been to put one of these underneath each shelf, but with these, I realized that I really was gonna need to do at least two. Now, as far as attaching these goes, because like I said, I know that double-sided tape's not gonna hold, what I've decided to do is use magnets. So basically what I've been doing is I've been hot gluing these round three quarter inch magnets to the back end of each side of the lights. And then I'm using another magnet on top of the glass shelf 
to help hold these in place. So I think this is gonna be a good solution to making sure these lights stay in place. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish getting these last few lights installed in here, and then I'm gonna give you a closer look at how they're connected in this cabinet, and we're gonna turn them on and see how well things light up. Okay, so full disclosure, you guys, it is now two hours later. I ran into a small snafu. Is snafu even a word people use anymore? Anyway, small unexpected problem. I did end up having to drill out the other hole in the top of this to be a little bit wider as well so that I could run another connection for the lights. So thankfully the connector for these lights is a split connection. It is a dual channel. So theoretically you could have one string of lights on one channel and one string of lights on the other channel. That way you could turn on one set of lights at one point in the day and another set at another point in the day if you wanted to. I'm not gonna use it that way, but thankfully that means it had the those two connectors because that's the only way I was gonna get this to work. I also did have to do some pretty creative cord management inside of here. So thankfully these lights also did come with black zip ties as a means for hanging them if you needed to hang them on something. And so I used those to kind of group the cords together and luckily they're all kind of hidden here in the front corner. I do need to deal with the cord management on the outside, but I'm gonna do that after this video. And as you can see up here in this top corner, I did use my leftover magnets to kind of secure the cords to the top of the cabinet. So let's go ahead and turn the lights on and see how it's looking. It's looking pretty good. Oh, and there's something else I forgot to tell you about these lights, but let's get back in closer. Okay guys, so these lights are actually dimmable at the touch of a button here. So we can take them from full strength, which is what they're at right now, or we can take them down less and less and less and less to whatever level we may need. And so I think that's pretty cool too. So that way, if you're seeing any kind of funky signs of like too much light or your plants being too close to the light, you don't really have to worry about moving the shelves or moving the lights. You can just change the brightness level for the lights. And then this also does have timer functionality. So I can actually set these to stay on for three hours, six hours, or 12 hours without me having to come turn them off. But let's go ahead and get to the fun part. And I'm gonna go gather up some plants that I think might work well in here. And we're gonna try them out and see what we think. Okay, you guys, so I got some plants together and we're gonna start putting them in there. But a few notes I wanted to make real quickly regarding some things that I'm not gonna do today to this cabinet but that I'm potentially gonna be doing in the future. So for starters, I'm not gonna be putting a humidifier in here right away, primarily because it is summertime here and my humidity in my house is averaging between 40 and 60% just on its own. I am, however, going to go ahead and put a humidity monitor in there so that I can see how the humidity level is compared to outside of the cabinet. And if it isn't getting as high as I want it to, then I will put one of my humidifiers in there. I also am gonna kind of see how things are going in terms of like, air circulation. If we are getting high enough humidity, I might just open these doors a couple of times a day to let it air out a bit versus installing some mini fans. But if it's looking like I really do need more airflow than just doing that in there, I will buy some mini fans and install them. And the last thing I wanna talk about before we start putting the plants in here is weather stripping. A lot of people weather strip their Ikea greenhouse cabinets. Once again, I'm just not sure if I'm gonna to need to do that yet or not. So I'm gonna kinda of just see how things go first. And if it's looking like I need to do that, then once again, I will do that and I'll make sure I document it for you guys as well. Now, like I said, it's summertime right now. So I have a hunch that everything's gonna be fine without me doing any of this stuff for summer. But when it starts to cool off in late fall, early winter here, that's when I think I'm gonna see changes that are gonna require me to start doing some of those things I just talked about. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and start putting some plants in here. All right, you guys, so the first plant I knew for sure I wanted to try in here is my Alocasia cupria. Unfortunately, he is still sprawling out a lot for me for getting to rotate him each time I water him and he's just been stretching towards the light. So he's gonna take up quite a bit of space in here for now, but if it doesn't make a big difference having him in here versus out of here, then I'm probably gonna take him back out and that way I can put a few more smaller plants in his place. And I am using a little felt coaster type thing, which once again, I'll link down below for you guys because this particular pot does not have felt feet on it and I don't want it to scratch up the glass. Okay, so next up, I think I'm gonna put one of my watermelon peperomia propagations in here because I've mentioned in several other videos to you guys that this is just, this one is is a weird one. It's a weird one and I've been trying to like perfect care of it and it's just a pain in the butt. And I'm wondering if maybe being in a more controlled, more human environment might help. So we're gonna put this little guy in here and see what happens. 
Okay, so there are two other propagation plants that I'm gonna put in here. One is one of my begonia maculata propagations because I've always wondered if there'll be a massive difference in how the begonia maculata performs in a more humid environment or not. And then also I grabbed my Syndapsis exotica propagation because this one has just been growing insanely slow. And so I'm wondering if more direct grow light situation and higher humidity will help it. And I think we're gonna put these on the second shelf. So next up, we're gonna put my Hawaiian snow bush in here because I've been having a hard time finding a spot that it seems to really be 100% happy in my house. And I'm thinking possibly it could be a humidity related issue. So we're gonna find out for sure because we're gonna put it in the cabinet here. So the next plant, I was thinking about putting it in here, but I kind of am scared to move it from where it is right now because it is making its comeback. But I wanted to go ahead and bring it out to show it to you anyway, because this is the little baby rattlesnake Calathea from the Is It Really Dead video. And as you can see here, we have one new leaf, another new leaf coming in. And down there at the base of the soil is yet a third new leaf starting to come in now. And so I really am hesitant to take this out of its current environment since it is starting to push out a bunch of new growth. But once we get some more growth coming in, Maybe we'll try it in the cabinet. So next up we have my little baby Syngonium and I just feel like this plant's not getting enough light where I have it right now, especially since the sun is tracking so far north in the sky right now. So we're gonna put her in the cabinet for now and see how she does. So honestly, you guys, I'm struggling a little bit to decide what I'm gonna put in here. And honestly, I am gonna leave an open space for one of my wishlist plants that I know I will wanna put in here. Hopefully by having that giant gap in the cabinet, that will encourage me to save a little bit quicker up towards getting that plant. But also I'm just kinda realizing that maybe I don't have a lot of permanent, AKA, non-propagation plants right now to put in here. So we may end up getting some new plants. There may be a plant haul going on sometime in the near future, including some wishlist plants to put into this cabinet. But in the meantime, I think for now, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go grab a lot of the propagations that are slower growing and move them in here because this should hopefully help boost that growth to be a little bit quicker. Okay, so I've gotten all the additional propagations, including my prayer plants, because I was thinking these would definitely enjoy being in this cabinet. So I'm just gonna work on getting these all assembled in here. I'm probably gonna time lapse this for you and then we'll take a closer look at everything once I've got it all in there. you guys I think this is where I'm gonna leave it looking for now just for now this whole process has taken way longer than I thought it was going to today but I'm interested to see how all of these plants are gonna perform in here so let's take a closer up look and I do have the lights just dim to the lowest level right now because it was really blowing out the picture when I was recording with them any higher than that and I do want to point out one thing that does kind of bug me about these lights is here you can see where the connector is that it hangs down so I might try to find some kind of solution to help pin that up. I mean, it's not horrible and I still have to deal with the cords on the outside there. So they'll be hidden behind the back black corner. So you won't be seeing those. So all in all, I mean, there's not a lot of cordage that you're seeing everywhere. I don't really feel like, I think I did a pretty good job of tucking it away up in that front corner. But anyways, let's look at the plants. So here we have the cupria, we have the watermelon peperomia. We're leaving this space open for the wishlist plant that I'm hoping to get sometime this year. And if we come down here, we've got the begonia maculata, the syngonium, the Hawaiian snowbush, the syndapsis exotica. I put in two of, well, actually I put in all of my Maranta propagations throughout here somewhere because they really should take off with higher humidity in here. And then here we've got a Peperomia prostrata, AKA string of turtles, cause it has not been growing as fast as I would like it to. And they usually grow really quick. So I don't know if it just hasn't been getting enough light lately or what, but hopefully this will help it. 
Down here on this shelf in that back corner is my shrimp plant propagation and it is a full sun plant and likes high high humidity and I feel like it has not been getting enough of either lately so hopefully this will help. And then you see we've got more of the Maranta propagations. These are two of my frost peperomia propagations. The one here on the left has just not been growing as fast as the rest for some reason and then this one was starting to get a little bit leggy the more the sun started to go north in the sky. And so then over here I have in the back I did recently propagate my Tretzgantia albovitata for the first time and those things root so fast you guys it's not even funny. Let me see if I can get up in here closer for you to see. Okay I actually just decided to pick it up for you guys it was easier but look at those roots. It hasn't even been two weeks since I did this and that thing has already taken off and it's already getting longer than it was when I propagated it. They're really really easy to propagate. You don't have to put them in water. I literally just cut it, stuck it into the soil, watered the soil and left it. And that's what it's been doing. So definitely really cool. Definitely really easy plant to propagate. So went ahead and put this one in here because I just want to see kind of what it does if it helps it grow faster. And I left the others out on the propagation carts. And then this is the very first propagation I ever took of my philodendron chordatum, which has done basically nothing. And it does have roots, you can see, but I don't know why it hasn't pushed out any new growth yet. So we're gonna see if being in here helps it out. And then this is one of those plants from the front yard, which is starting to grow more. And I really do like the look of this plant and I still have no clue what it is, but hopefully it'll grow a little faster in here and then we'll be able to figure out exactly what it is someday. And if we move down to the bottom shelf, so I did go ahead and I took my Asiatic Jasmine propagation here, which this was five, I think, or maybe six different propagations that I recently potted up together. And it just hasn't been getting enough light where it is once again, because of the sun tracking so far north right now. So we're gonna see how it does in here. Took one of my Salsa Dancer Hibiscus propagations and put it in here and look at that beautiful variegated leaf. And you guys are actually gonna be getting um, not one, but two videos this Saturday, just a heads up, it will be a double feature weekend because we're gonna be covering variegation. And here's another one of my Salsa Dancer Hibiscus. And you can see slightly different variegation on this one. And so I'm gonna be giving you two videos, one explaining variegation and why certain variegations look the way they do versus others. And then the other one is gonna be on specific type of variegation and popular plants of that type. Now in the front here, we have one of my philodendron Brazil propagations, which wasn't even intentional. The plant broke off when I was moving it. And so I just went ahead and potted it up and it's already starting to put out some new growth. Quick reminder, once again, this is not legally allowed to be propagated. I don't think anybody's gonna prosecute you for doing it in your own home, but you wouldn't wanna get caught selling these yet. The patent is still active. Over here, we have another string of turtles that is not growing quite as fast as I wanted it to. So we're gonna see if it'll pick up in here. And here we have one of the philodendron micans propagations that we did together in my how to propagate philodendron videos. And here you can see it's getting some new growth coming out right here. And so this one is definitely starting to take off, but I feel like it might benefit from having a slightly more humid environment. So that's why I moved it in here. We got another one of the yard plants over here. And then this other yard plant, which this one is growing faster than the other one. And I put it in here instead of the other one because I really wanna figure out what it is. And so since this one's already growing quickly, I was like, let's try and make it grow even faster so we can find out what it is. And that is it for now, you guys. Like I said, I'm gonna get some more plants to put in here that are more permanent because some of these propagations are gonna definitely be ready to be sold soon. And so then we're gonna have more space in here. And I don't know if I mentioned this at the beginning of this video or not, but we are actually in my office right now. And originally this is not where I was gonna put this cabinet, but the place I wanted to put it, there was no outlet anywhere near there and it was gonna look insane to try and run like an extension cord to put it where I wanted it. So instead I decided to put it in here and since this is a north facing room, there's not a lot of light that reaches this side of the room. So it's a perfect place to have a cabinet that is using grow lights. So like I said, still a work in progress and I will be giving you a one month update after this to let you know kind of how things have been going. If I've had to add the humidifier, if I had to add fans, if I had to add weather stripping, anything like that. and we'll 
be looking at a growth rate update on that video as well. But in the meantime, I'm interested to know how many of you guys have greenhouse cabinets, and especially if it's an Ikea greenhouse cabinet, so comment down below and let me know. And if you've not yet hit that like and or subscribe button down below, please do so, and I look forward to seeing you guys again next time. Aloha!